Quick. God. Hey, guys. Cause... Sorry, we were just talking about Cooper's mom. Oh, we're talking about slurs, well, actually. Uh, that, in no. that case... Let's continue. <laughs> continue. I'm all in. Continue. Continue. Hey, up, loves how do. Oh, the best hey, song up. of the Divinity soundtrack just came on, guys. Let's say we Divinity. Oh. Quirky no, balls, mate. No, you did say Divinity. Just oh. it's funny to have quoted Witcher. All right. Hey, guys. It is Thursday. Right. In it. Welcome to the Discord. Show oh. about the show. Where we uh, talk about things that have happened and answer some questions and uh, you get a quick sneak peek behind the DM screen about some decision making and all that good stuff. Um, today we got Koibi. I'm my guy. Oh, well. My two uh, least favorite people. Uh, Rank us right now. My, t uh, ooh, uh, my two favorite British people to hate. I mean, th that would mean that you enjoy hating us more than you enjoy hating Bell. Yeah, I do. Okay, fair. Because Bell doesn't care, but if I just poke enough at you guys, I get a reaction. With Bell, I don't. You know what I mean? That's why it's funny. Bell doesn't care because she has a god it's complex. It's too real. <laughs> it's too real, guys. Um, before we get going, any announcement? I, dude. I... Sorry about the whole, like, not asking people for questions and all that shit this week. I've just been, it's been a fucking week, man. Like, the last few weeks, I've been in such, like, a, a weird fucking depressive spiral where uh, I barely stream on my own accord. And, like, every time I need to do DS stuff, I just either, I'm like, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. And then I end up just not doing it. I'm sorry. I'll be better. I promise. Smile. Um, I'm king. How dare you have a life. Other than that, um... I don't think I have any, like, announcements per se. Anyone else have anything they want, like, uh... Nope. Uh... No, like, we're the... We're not the announcement boys. True. True. I, don't have anything to announce. I did my boys. big weight loss announcement on Sunday. Um... Sunday, Sunday, uh, oh, Sunday. Announcement! What? It's not my announcement, but it's a group announcement. Is it? It's Belle and Duke's birthday tomorrow. It is. Losers! They've got a birthday. So make sure... Shut the fuck up, Koiba. <laughs> You're right, Koiba. Make I sure agree. that you wish them a happy birthday. Um, I know Belle said that she's going to open the present I got her on Sunday, which is appropriate because it's it's useful in D&D. Oh, dude. Dice or Dice Tower? Dice. Hell yeah. A jar of here. She won't see this until she goes to edit it, so that'll be... Not a problem. I got a, I got a dice. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil what they look like, but she'll find out on Sunday. What are you? What one are of them you, is square. What are, you, what are you doing? One of them is a triangle. Fidgeting. What are you fidgeting with? What is that? Is that one of those fucking? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's a baby one though. It's only fifty pounds. Whoa, that's so expensive. <laughs> See, I was gonna go the other way. I was like, man, that's heavy, man. Jesus. <laughs> oh, okay. That's too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um. I hate you both. Yeah, both it's uh, so Duke and Bell's birthday tomorrow. They share birthdays. Isn't that cringe? And then it's Laura's birthday next week as well. Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. And so, uh, then... A lot of, like, half the fucking DS cast are fucking March slash April babies. Right, isn't that and right? the other and half you, are fucking June. And then the rest of us are June. Yeah, what the fuck? Well, said March slash April, so... Not just March. Idiot. Nobody... So you get one month away. You get, you get May without birthdays. I mean, and the other months. <laughs> nah. No, those, listen. Doesn't count, is that what you about to say? Doesn't count. Doesn't count. count. Go fuck yourself. I was turning 15 this year. Aww. <laughs> yeah, canonically. You're growing can up. Koi be underage. So any sexual joke you made about me or my parents, nonsense. <laughs> no, 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 no. Joke's about you and nonsense. Yeah, Joke's about your parents I tried to kiss you on stream, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, quick, could turn up this whole time. Yeah, I've been 12. That's, That's why you're well. afraid. He didn't want you to get a fucking... Yeah, I was like, you want you to does, we don't case. record it. I don't want you to have this evidence. <laughs> Bell, cut it out! Okay. okay. Can I help you? Is that the new meme? Just Any... Bell, cut this. Anyway, guys, welcome to Dungeon Discourse, the show where we talk about... <laughs> <laughs> well, we talk about D and D apparently. Um, this is this the start. We just restarted. Yeah, so <laughs> last we left off, the party made their way through the Serpent Fort in Nessus, the ninth of the nine hells, and um, breached the fort together with the Iron Crusade uh, battalion that was there. 
and split their ways to go search the upper level uh, because they were told that some kind of powerful wizard has been living there for a while and if there's any sort of tool or MacGuffin, as you, if you will, that would get him out of there, that would probably be a good place to start. Uh, they searched around, found some really intricate locks that really took them way too long to fucking decide to finally fuck with. Um, found some journal pages, journal entries, some, some goodies, some supplies. Uh, act accidentally activated a gateway, uh, summoning a, a large aberration, the large tentacled face and, and uh, pretty powerful psychic magic to its disposal, but um, got rid of that. Need searching, and then you found yourselves battling a lich. A lich uh, that named himself Zolgan the Eternal, uh, but who apparently, according to journal entries that you found, used to go by the name Banak. And obviously, for those that, you know, that, that, that have watched Campaign 1, know that Banak was a pretty significant bad guy in the whole Orcus story arc, uh, but never quite got dealt with properly due to the fact that he had a bunch of clones of himself walking around and he would just every time a body died his consciousness would just jump to another and, and there's that um so first things let's just initial like your thoughts on the episode guys since i got since i got you guys here uh terror pain stress huh? no that was just in the announcements <laughs> Nah, it's, uh, it's one of those weird things where your character's are like, who the fuck does this guy think he is? But out of character, you're like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Yeah. I mean, piecing that together was great. It was just like seeing the snake stuff and being like, powerful wizard. And then I, can't, I don't know what made it. It was like the entry saying, hey, like, I'll get revenge or whatever. I was like, this fucking motherfucking banana. It was the entry talking about now working for Asmodeus. Yes, Asmodeus and get watched your face yeah. change. Mm. And I just see it like on the corner was... of Discord, Koiba RNG. Pop it lit up. Literally, it was the moment where I was like, I was having the thoughts like, this could be banana. I was like, I doubt it is. Because when we got the seal, I was thinking, it's going to be someone like, powerful and all that right and i was like oh you can use this and it's yeah that moment i was like holy fuck it is that fucking snake bastard it is that fucking cunt and i'm like i now have to now forget about him and everything i know and how evil he is and be like yeah, oh who's I this mean, guy he sounds like a chill fella <laughs> i mean it's like it's one of those things where obviously it's all played out in the same world um yeah. he got away so he's spent his time doing things and he decided Basically, his motivations were... Because Orcas and Asmodeus don't really, you know, they don't mesh together. They don't like each other, right? Yeah. Uh, it's that same, like, you know, devils and demons that hate food. Fucking conflict. Like, the, one is a devil, the other one is a demon, right? So that... One is literally the leader of all the devils, the other one is the leader of all the demons. So, like, there's naturally Maybe they some... have a sec secret romance together. But uh, the way, like, Banak kind of described this is that, like... He proved himself useful enough to Asmodeus to, to kind of let him uh, aid him in his search for more power. Because the whole, his whole motivation is I wasn't strong enough. I got defeated. What's my next step up? And he decided, apparently, that for the next to become even more powerful and potentially come back for some sort of revenge was he needed to be a lich. He needed to be more powerful. Is no, I was gonna say this is this is not this is not well. You know, you can very much say, "Hey, you'll find out at some point," because mm -hmm. um, it is world law. But is his sort of power arc almost going to be doing those like forbidden rituals of, "Hey, let's fucking become a god"? Like, is is he that power crazy that he's? He or is he like he knows his limits? He goes, "This is powerful as I can reasonably get. I'm gonna attain that, and that is I like think... that's the ceiling." Or is he just yeah, crazy enough? He goes like my God. motivation for. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a bit of a yeah. sneak peek behind. Yeah, that. Cool. My motivation. Okay, if it's world knowledge, then don't. My motive because I know that Morbin had her whole like post campaign story arc is I want to get rid of all the clones, right? Yeah. So my motivation is like my my thought process is or was. Um. There's one left now yeah. you know, 30 years later and that's this guy yeah. and he was like listen the clone thing isn't working i need something else and that's when he decided okay i'm gonna find a way to make myself into a powerful lich and obviously 
he's worked with the lich before or like you know so he kind of mm. knows the deal with like the phylacteries and um and all that shit so he's like okay i kind of know the vibe i kind of know how it works i know what the drains are he tried to uh sequester his phylactery didn't work so that's that's out there somewhere um my reasoning is and i'll give you guys a little bit of a of a of a sneak peek of of the future is i want there to be a, a sort of like one shot at some point where half of you plays campaign one characters the other half plays campaign two so i wanted to give you guys a common enemy a reason to team up and Man. i feel like banak would be that that I, like, that, that mulligan be like oh i shit you know I, mean? I genuinely wouldn't know who i'd want to play in that because <laughs> uh, so like, i feel cool. like the only like oh. the only like forced pick would be soko yeah. playing morwin to finally conclude that shit, right but other than that yeah, yeah. like that's Literally kind of like and that's like, why i was I like okay both. would it make sense for him to oh yeah, yeah like i feel like uh, it's not uh, i found a way to kind of introduce him to you guys where he very much seems like uh, this is none of our business but he did yeah. you know you know what i mean but it's very much like yeah he he's there holy fuck if we see, we probably should like let someone know this is going on because like above our pay grade right now yeah, and that's probably where like but, if you were, were to like you know you go back to fucking uh, uh eldilon and you let that known they're gonna be like oh wait because they're empire they know about the, the mm -hmm. trials and tribulations of the heroes of exile mm -hmm. and they'll get the word and that's kind of when at some point whenever right, we feel like doing that mm -hmm. one shot we'll probably be like oh, an, an anniversary thing or some shit right? yeah, cool. The word will, will you know, a lot half of the Heroes of Exile will either appear in Eldilon or you'll be summoned to them. And that's when you kind of join forces like, hey, you fought him as a Lich before. We've only fought him as a Wizard before. We kind of, this, let's work together on this kind of thing. You know what I mean? So that's my, really? that was my like idea of like, I want him there to not be a, the bad guy for this campaign. Of course. But I wanted to like- But there's a late tie in. Like, like a tie-in to potentially do some kind of one shot where half the party plays the old characters and the other half plays new characters and and also have a way for um i want the party or at least some of the party to interact and meet with the heroes of exile because i feel like as far as like character development goes there's also a lot of learning opportunities there for them as a group mm -hmm. and how to function as a group you know what i mean i also think it'll be really interesting to see how it's be a fucking cool ass one shot too change mm -hmm from what they were mm. yeah right um who do we think people would pick for that i think laura picks i think laura picks trim 100 percent. right i think i think yeah like even with daigon if like we do res daigon and all that like if that big ear fan and all that fucking shit's going on i think daigon uh, daigon fucking hell they're the same person uh and i think laura would i don't know i think laura picked trim bell Hmm. I don't so know. If, if Laura picks Trim, I think Bell and Bell picks pick Thomas, Thomas, right? Because she got yeah. tortured to fuck by this guy. Fuck by Benal. That's so, true. So I that feel like true. it would make sense for Bell to be a Thomas in that one shot. I mean, I am leaning more currently towards a Lazarin than Nicole, but also Nicole is such a good tie-in for Benak as well. Just in I general. Mean, everybody, every campaign one character would be a good exactly true. Benak, but it's just not true. a matter but of like, old as which shit. campaign one character Nicole is the fucking most, ancient, no. Like, which, what, which of the campaign one characters have the most like unfinished business with this guy? And I feel like top oh, two are definitely cool. Morwen and Thomas because they have yeah. li like Morwen's entire fucking... I can see, Ethan, I can see you playing Brooks over... I think, oh, this is what comes down to, though, is that I think if I play Nicole, you play Brand, but if I play Elazin, you probably play Brooks. Just so it's that, like... I I'm think, a good double up on Claret. Oh, well, whatever the, the fuck that, you are. The, the first end, thought but. that I had was if Trim... Uh, sorry, if Laura and Belle play Campaign 1 characters, mm. then... I could make Dutch's life a lot easier by playing Bran because then the three Crimson's Lotus fuckheads could be off doing something when the call arrives. And that's like a good explanation as to why we're playing those characters. We're all in though. That's the way that we're sort of in. Like, the thing is, like, don't, I, I think at the end of the day, it's something to like all Isn't talk that? about. And I'll, my Definitely. motivations would be like, yeah. I wanted to be a three and three split. Well, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But I definitely what? think from a character, like, story arc... I mean, I think I probably so Laura, Bell, right? I think, Bell, I think right? Atanas and Morgan are almost like a must. Just due to their... Yeah. And then, I mean, in, in a way, I think if... 
I mean, I mean, in a way, if Actanas is there, Trim is there, almost, right? Yeah, like, that would make sense. Plus... I mean, also, but also it makes sense for Trim to stay behind, because she'd be like, Actanas like, I gotta do this thing. She's yeah. like, do you yeah, want no, me then? True, like, just, it, there's, there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot. Yeah. Always depends basically what. Well, I, I think we'll, we'll it, who would it goes on what. We'll talk about what, what, what's, one, exactly. Ignoring character, exactly. ignoring players. Who would be your third pick if Morwin and Actanis? Who's My your third, third pick? Wrong character? Hmm. Who'd you draft for that? You draft. Maybe Gen. Yeah, because. See, yeah, and that's a pretty. The whole final battle shit. was like all about like yeah. Orcas and Banak were there and they like had a hand in fucking up Gen's like home. Yeah. Right? So like Yeah. Probably Gen then I guess. Mm -hmm. If we're purely going it, on like a what would feel the most like complete as like a story beat, mm -hmm. I'd say Gen would be my third pick. I don't Gen I'm just so um do has to panic about tall. spells again. Just so oh, Duke, Duke has to fucking a breakdown about spells. <laughs> oh, oh fucking the resistance up around I've done nothing <laughs> So uh, I would be incredibly torn because, on the one hand, even at the same level, I feel like Bran is more powerful than Brooks. Mm -hmm. Bran is very optimized, has a very yeah. unique... But for Bran, it's very easy class. to be like, nah, Bran can't do this one because the Raven Queen hasn't done something else. So that would also be a very yeah. easy reason to not pick Bran, right, I guess? <laughs> like, oh. No, like... You don't really have like, to explain that one kind of thing. You know what I mean? Nicole's an easy one to explain. Wait, no, like, this is an out-of-character toss-up. Toss like, yeah. The out-of-character toss-up is, on the one hand, really fucking powerful character. On the other hand, Brooks gets to flirt with at least some of the Heroes of Exile, and that's fucking hilarious. That is funny. That is funny. God. Can you imagine Brooks and Ectanis together? Oh, they're gonna hate each other. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> but, like, as far as Banak goes, I wanted... With you guys being in hell, I was like, okay, well, this is gonna be a little harder than pot then, then I... Mm, spaded. Uh -huh. I had this idea of, like, a joint one-shot for a while, and I've always kind of been like, what if I do... Blah, blah, blah. And then... I just kind of landed on Banak a little while ago. I was like, I mean, that could be a good... Because, like, it's a reason for old characters to come back. And if I just kind of introduce them as, like, a side hustle, side boss, they just kind of encounter randomly on their path. And then months later, they hear that name come up again. They'll, like, they'll be aware of what he is and how powerful he is. So they'll know the threats. And mm. that's kind of how I landed on introducing Banak into this campaign too in that sense like not make him like a focal super bad main character main bad guy kind of thing but like make him Evelyn. show up have a fight make him threatening enough uh, make it make sense for him to be there at that point in time uh and stand in your way wanting you know finding a, a way out and then you know that way he's introduced the, the current party knows about him about and about you know, have seen a taste of his power, so knows how serious the threat is, and that way, kind of the 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 premeditated introductions have been made, and then when at some point the call comes, they'll understand. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to spend the first hour of that one shot explaining to this current party yeah, who the fuck the knock is. Like that's all been done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like okay, boom. Yeah, they know about this guy, and like they'll yeah. have some information for. The Heirs of Exile be like, well, he's not a wizard anymore, boys. He's a fucking lich. Ugh. And that way they can also be, even though they have less experience with Banak as a person, they'll at least be able to help the Heirs of Exile in that sense of like, listen, we've seen what he can do now. And kind of give them pointers, you know what I mean? So like, it kind of it becomes like this, it really becomes like a joint operation instead of like, a, you're going to be the, the, the hose assistant. But like, you actually have valuable information linked to the table and... Um, that way, it's not just a a, a, a gimmick one shot that actually kind of makes sense, I guess. <clears throat> well, that's just my that's that's my my take. I, I don't know when we're gonna be doing this. This will probably make most sense as like a hey, DS has been around for X amount of years uh, celebration one shot. Is it at some our point. five year anniversary this year? I think so. Nah. No. What twenty eighteen? We we started twenty eighteen, right? Yeah. So this will be so, like September will be our. This would be year. five. Oh, this would like be this five. Is a good five year anniversary. Yeah. So like September. What was September October? Five September, years. September. September. Twenty. No. 
Yeah, it's yeah, like end because of it September, was episode yeah. ten that I joined, yeah. and it, that was uh, that was just after the November-ish. Christmas break. Was it after Christmas? No. Yeah. No, it might have been. I might have done one. You know, I. It was end of November because then we went on Christmas break, and you were like, "Yo, you want to stay?" And I spent the drive up north, like for Christmas, in the snow, listening to the old episodes, trying to catch up on everything. It was either September twenty. Because I, mean, I remember. Just it might have been 29th because I remember it being originally September 22nd, but I couldn't do it because it was my mum's birthday, so I had to push it back a week to September oh, 29th. Wait. That's the only reason I remember it is because it Imagine was something. Mom. Yeah, well, uh, you did it at the time. You did it at the time. You, so did it at you. The time. You, just, you just didn't have a dad. <laughs> uh, Fucking no, check, orphan yeah. over here. <laughs> uh, no, 23rd. Was it 23rd? Oh, so we did the day after then? Yeah, that's, 23rd. That's what it would be then. So maybe it was the weekend of. I was like, were we originally thinking maybe doing it on a Saturday? Was that maybe what it was? And I went, I can't do the Saturday, Sunday? Maybe, yeah. Whatever. So what's but, the closest Sunday to September 23rd this year? September... Uh, September 24th. September 24th. 24th. Which is an exact, like, a year... It's almost an exact year. five years later. That's crazy, yeah. yeah. I mean, 24th of September 2018 is when the uh, when the video went up on YouTube. YouTube yeah. hmm? Okay, five years of that. <laughs> God, yeah. me and my toaster fucking and you mic. you joined this, uh, episode 10, uh, Ethan? Yes. Nine no, or ten. December 9th. Yeah, Number 10 was new friends and old enemies. Yeah, that was December, that makes sense. December 9th um, when that aired. Yeah, it was 10. It was episode 10 that I joined. Um, so yeah, like we're old. That way, it's kind of it's it, it's a bit of like oh, I need to throw some kind of significant fight in their way so that they kind of yeah. have like a proper like we beat the bad guy now we can get out of hell kind of thing, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, and also it's like that's a good setup for what will eventually, hopefully, finally be the end of Banak. You know what I mean? As far as your question, because we kind of got sidetracked. As far as your question goes, like how powerful does he want to be? Mm. I think that fully depends on he's seen a taste of your power now. And like, I completely forgot that's what I asked when yeah, we got same, into this. I just remember, I was like, oh, wait, that was the question. Um, he has seen a taste of your power now. He knows that there's a more powerful party out there. And he. He could have easily. I, I went easy on you, obviously. I'm not going to have him fucking spam uh, eight and nine fuck level spells. It, fucking fight. that Dutch. This is, this is what I'm waiting for, by the way. This is I love your DM style um, so much because obviously it's cool to fight the big. The big baddies at lower levels, because you're like, oh, we fought the, I recognize him. Oh, it's that mm-hmm. what? You know, that's really fucking cool. I am waiting for the like level 20 f- big fight we have, and it's like rat, sewer rat, right? And it's like, oh, this is the mega ultra sewer rat? Yeah, go fuck yourself. It's immune to everything. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> right. I didn't realize you were this playing thing. Hades. Yeah, you know, like it, that's a, but I love this thing. I love that trope so much where it's like, oh yeah, the little, the, the big guys are fucking busy. You wait till you see like the goblin lord and you're like, what do you mean? Oh, it's just a random goblin in a mountain, but he's the fucking most powerful, like, Suddenly, paladin. Nicole's like history with goblins make a lot more sense too. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's a CR1 goblin, but he has a 50 cal sniper. No, yeah. no, but like, he's like the most powerful paladin of like the goblin god, right? And that just means he's got like this level 20 like paladin <laughs> who is just like, you know what I mean? Like, shit like that is fucking hilarious to me. And I think it'd be, it's such a, just a good play on the trope of being like, hey, your big bad is just some guy. <laughs> it's like some guy in a tavern. Good luck. It's like, what? But yeah, like, what I it, feel it's just some random as far as Banak yeah. goes, uh, it depends, right? Say you beat him in that one shot, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, somehow don't manage to find his phylactery or whatever it is. Like, there you mm-hmm. don't finish him off properly. Mm-hmm. That might be when he's like, listen, okay, this lich thing is not it. Um, it's time to become a fucking god, motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, time to... Well, that, that all depends on how you guys yeah. deal with him when he comes up again, pretty much. Yeah. And okay. now he's like, I'm, now, I'm more powerful than I was before, because I still have these powerful spells at my disposal, but I'm also a fucking lich, so like, I, it's a little hard to kill me. Um, I uh, literally snap my finger, somebody dies, that kind of thing, so. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's that probably going to be a September thing then, and we'll have that cool, cool one shot where half the party plays the old crew and the other half plays the new crew. <clears throat> um... Plus, I, I love 
writing, you know, because there's a lot of people or like a lot of stories that are like, I wrote a book. This book play in same, the second book I write play in se se uh, same universe, but there's no callbacks, no nothing. I kind of want, I like having continuity and references and, you know what I mean? Yeah. I also think it's really good from a player world building perspective to know that even after you put the play the character down, like it is a living, breathing world, they continue yeah. to exist, they continue yeah. to make an impact. Yeah, so like, because the only reason Banak wanted to become a lich was because Morvan has been take, t t fucking spending the last like 30 years of her life, like the, the past 30 years of her life, just literally tracking down all of his fucking clones and fucking killing them one by one. And he's like, okay, I'm running out of clones here, guys. I need something else. And in the meantime, <clears throat> you know, he proved himself loyal enough to Asmodeus to not having him fucking kill him on the spot. And got granted a place to kind of do some shit for him while also figuring his own shit out. And um, get to the point where he is now. Um, but yeah. Banak, well, that smile. Means that you have to figure <laughs> out what the... Well, like, what the heroes are doing right now, and like, what's changed. Not crazy. Some of them are old. <laughs> Some of them got four old. different STDs. No, he didn't. Nicole was a good boy. I'll say that. Who got? Who got? The fucking. He's, he's really got old. Guilt to run, dude. He's vibing. Got guilt to run, dude. Rand's busy getting pegged by the Raven Queen. Well. Uh, he I didn't say no chat. Quick to get the fucking questions up, but uh, anyone else? Uh, you guys have any more that you want to ask me while we're, while we're on top? Well, I mean, like, I have a sole half question, and again, it's a bit of a deep dive, so sorry, it's just no gonna be a tangent and a half. That's fine. But like, so especially now at the moment, the party is very much uh, emotionally okay. raw. They are on thin ice mentally. Right, and even before this, they were not fucking bad a thousand on mental health, right? Like, they, they, this is probably pretty fucked up. As, like, a story writer, do you find it, like, quite easy for it to create these story beats and, like, push, like, without reaching that breaking point? Because obviously, there has to be a breaking point at some point, otherwise, what's the fucking point, right? Or, like, whatever. Do you find it quite hard to, like, keep that breaking point? Or do you actually find it's been harder because you're gone well okay i need stakes and stuff but i don't want to fucking push these characters too hard and suddenly just go yeah fuck this you know i'm um never venturing again well yeah but also like it's it's it, at the end of the day i can't really predict that no it's fair you know what i mean uh something just fucking happened nice something happened i hate Ooh. when that happens no, I saw like a, a frame open up on my screen for like a second and it was gone. And it was like right as Spotify swapped the song, like a Spotify just had a hiccup, I don't know. Oh, um, uh, I can't predict that because at the end of the day, like I, I have an idea of how you guys play your characters and, and what mm. the breaking points are, but it can very easily be... I could very easily be wrong, right? Because I don't own yeah. the character. I don't decide yeah, what they do. Uh, what I do think is that this is definitely the furthest and the hardest they've been pushed ever. Mm. Uh, at least during this campaign they've lost one of their teammates and the fact that they weren't immediately able to mourn and and put them to rest uh i think and it sucks as well because you were in the middle of doing something else um so i think my original plans for this arc going to zagalia have changed a bit because at initially um you know, Brooks wanted to go visit his family. I don't even know if that's still on the table. You know, he could very easily be like, hey, fuck it, man. Uh, we'll fucking just go to the forest, bring this thing home. I, uh, fuck it. Don't care about seeing my family mm -hmm. right now. Could easily, very easily be a thing, right? Yeah. Um, my initial plans for, like, the whole forest thing were also going to be a, bit, a little, like, gritty and dark. But I feel like I might mm -hmm. have to just kind of alter that a bit to kind of give you guys a bit more of a breather. Um and make it a little more light-hearted in the sense of like instead of having to fight some evil thing you just kind of get put to the test by the people that live there and you have to like face some trials yeah. you know delegated and instructed by the people that live there to kind of like prove your worth like are you worthy of getting this object yeah. kind of yeah. thing with like a little like lower stakes 
because mm. of all the shit that has happened. Because I fear, I fear that if I do proceed with my original plans for all of this mm. shit, that's a bit, that's a bit much. <laughs> that's a bit much. That's fair. <laughs> do you find it quite like? Do you find it sort of easier with your writing? Obviously, like overall, you know, like I assume you would know that us as players would come to you like, hey, it's a bit heavy right now yeah. on this. Could you just? Like, can yeah, we ease obviously. off of this story beat for a second? Because, you know, it's just a bit heavy yeah, and yeah, I need, course. you know. But do you still find it quite, not easy, but I don't know. Do you find, like, is your writing space still quite good for you to be able to still make these stories? Or do you find, like, are you finding it well, hard? I don't think we've had, these? like, we've had one thing. Yeah. It was, la like, pretty early last campaign where yeah. I guess boundaries weren't properly set. And yeah. And got made clear. Like, that's hey, diff that's the difference cool. between boundaries being set yeah, and ever like, since hey, then i don't think i've not heard anything about anything no 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 so, like, oh no I, I we're all good on that front um yeah but you know like the thing is the way i write things is like i myself like to do pretty like dark nitty-gritty uh yeah you know uh, i'm a i'm a you know i'm a horror enjoyer when it comes to my, yeah. like, you know, playing games God, or playing or watching movies in my past campaign, time. I, I am, I'm a horror enjoyer, so I do like mm -hmm. to go for the more darker story tropes. Oh, yeah. Uh, or, like, the more serious. But I also love I also love drama. So, mm -hmm. I, I, want, I always want that to be mistakes. I want things to be fucking gritty. I want things to be fucking mm -hmm. scary. Um, but, I don't think, as far as, like, just story writing goes, I don't I don't think I've ever had an issue, really. Um, yeah. No, because... you're saying just, it, it, there's a lot of heavy going on. It's just, it's yeah, just there's a lot of heavy going on, but that's also kind of the, the reason why I love D&D so much is because of no, those, exactly like, right. heavy, dramatic... Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a time for joking and fucking around. There's a time for, like, okay, let's dig dig down and, and fucking get into it. Mm. Um, which is also why I'm super fucking excited for the whole uh, Ravenloft shit to kick off at some point. That's going to be a really fun fucking... It's basically my way of being able to Our trip, man. Tend to run, run you heart. guys run you guys through uh, the Curse of Strahd without the problematic writing on wizard side because I can just take the things that I like about it and make it my own. Smile. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's some questionable parts of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I'm before we even get to that shit, I am making sure that I read the entire module front to back and I just like, okay, we'll keep this, toss that out. We'll that goes. This. That goes. Uh, um yeah it's but like I like mean, i said to kind of get back to to the original um the original planning for the whole sagalia thing was going to be a bit more serious but because of all the shit that's happened i'll probably ease up on that a bit and just kind of copy and paste that some like that that same vibe somewhere else yeah. down the line you know what i mean um Wait, what are you saying you think? do you think Sorry. okay ethan mm. because like you're gonna next session probably gonna get out of hell because you have the you know you killed didn't kill, but Banak fucked off. You're gonna find the second part of the MacGuffin in that room, or they put it together. Do you think that after all that shit, like obviously, I think the my the idea of how things are gonna go is okay. Main priority is try and see if we can res Daigon. That's gonna be probably the majority of next, like the first half of next session. Is okay. Fuck. Um. Like, do you even, like, does Brooke still want to go to his family after all this shit? Or is he like, you know what, dude? I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, our contact that we were planning to give the tooth to is in Stonefall. Yeah, but, like, you don't, you know what I mean? That was, that is, he told you that because you mentioned, oh, we're going to go there. As well. Yeah, we. If I remember correctly, we were given other options of where. Yeah. To drop plus, it. if you were like after the forest, let's fucking go home. Zip zoop, you can just bring it yourself, right? Like that's not really a big deal. I think Brooks wants to see his family because if anything after that, he wants to check on his brother. Okay. And he wants some downtime, mm -hmm. even if it's just a day, especially because like yesterday in game time was his fucking birthday and we got teleported to the hells yeah. like it's not great for him friend died on your but birthday. also <laughs> when we get there he's he's not going in as himself 
Like, he just doesn't... He wants to go see his, his dad and his brother. But he doesn't want to deal with literally anyone else that knows him. Mm -hmm. No, I get you. Specifically okay. certain people, but... Yeah, yeah, and like, probably gonna make sure that things are a little more lighthearted after all of this shit, because, uh... No, don't, don't fucking break us. Don't want to overdo it. <laughs> I don't... Break us. Don't want to overdo like, it. If certain people find out Brooks is there, Kess might murder a bitch. Um... Yeah, so I guess the logical order would be deal with the Daigon situation, Forests, I mean, and then Brooks' is home, I guess. It was Daigon drop it off the It depends how we plan to deal with the Daigon situation. Right. I guess so, yeah. Because find holy person be like oh! <laughs> well, yeah no yeah it would be Daigon drop Fang. off Fang down at Brooks's folks and oh, then fuck off yeah go to the forest yeah right right, right. I mean this is the thing though going up to the forest mm -hmm. from like we let's assume we come back to Natil right because we don't know where the thingy my is gonna send us could you imagine much. fucking Eldalon? <laughs> if it sends us back to Natil, we either go to Daramuth or Cleric's Refuge. Cleric's Refuge is to the north. North. If we go there to get Dagon fixed, that's right next to the Whispering Woods. But do we really want to be going through the woods with a fucking tooth of Esmodius? So fuck around and find out. <laughs> I think it depends. I assume I assume we'll ask Marcus where he thinks we could go to get someone to bring her back. Is would he tell us to go to Clark's Refuge, or would he tell us to go to Dartmouth? That's either or is a good choice. Because, like, he knows his High Cleric is in Dartmouth, and, like, if he's patched up, probably is powerful enough to at least perform the ritual. But then again, Cleric's Refuge is, like, where the clerics of Sagalia go to for, like, all the training and shit, so there's definitely some fucking powerful... Like, that's where he got trained. Like, so he knows people there as well, and he knows that um, there are people there that can do it, yeah. So, like, either or, is, I, a good, uh, either or is, a fa is a valid option. What I would expect, then, is that we'll go from Natil to Daramuth, if the MacGuffin lands us in Natil. I mean, it might even land us in Daramuth. I mean, we might be able to choose. You know, we don't know. Dutch knows, We'll, we'll we go know. to <laughs> Daramuth. Fucking <laughs> buff up in Lamoa, please. Ocean. If we can't fix <laughs> Dagon in Daramuth, we're going up to Clouch Refuge and we're just skipping yeah. Stonefall. Or we're literally Yeah, because there were other options for where to drop off the fucking yeah. I would have to go back in the video and check those because I didn't write them down because mm -hmm. I foolishly assumed that we wouldn't be on a different plane Idiot. and that someone wouldn't die. None of us thought that would ever happen until it happened. Uh, I was just as I, I was just as mm -hmm. caught off guard by that as, as you guys, don't worry. <laughs> What? You so, planned it. Well, no, <laughs> I was just, just like, okay, well... Could just made it not happen. <laughs> there's several outcomes to that, and there's a very small chance this will happen, yeah. but if it does... And, you know. Part... What's, what's great is the party's learned. Don't try and not avoid the fight. Just fucking kill the bitch and then deal with it later. Yeah, like... <laughs> the opposite to what you should be learning in D&D. The one time you listen to someone and don't immediately attack. <laughs> we end up in hell. Fucked. It's so funny. It's such an. Your party has a knack well. of picking up the wrong alert, picking the wrong moments as learning opportunities. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, um, I assume we'll go to Daramuth with Dagon. If we can resurrect Dagon there, we go south to Stormfall for a few days, and then go up to the Whispering Woods and deal with that shit. If that doesn't work, then. We blow off Brooks's family. We go to Cleric's Refuge. True. I, mean, we'll, I guess we'll see on Sunday, right? The fucking journey's going to Sunday, 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 Sunday. True. True. Um, <clears throat> damn. We could just eat her. 
got some questions in Discord as well, guys. Oh. Laura asks uh, for everyone, uh, how are we feeling about Banak's reappearance? We kind of already kind of went over that, I guess, with that guy. Uh, very, very, very poggers, but also, oh dear God. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I mean, he ran from us. He can't be that great. Why would you say that with the man <laughs> who pulls the punches? I mean, Brooks cause... already, Brooks already fucking ego checked him. Mm. And the only reason I, True. like... You should have figured death burps, man. I could have, but I decided to not to because, like, the doi. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Why not? Why, why do you not want two dead party members? I decided to attack the NPC. That way, if he does end up dying, it's not that big of a deal. Because you guys... Really sure. A, a, that's literally, that was literally me pulling my punches because you just lost a party member. That's that's the only reason why he didn't hurt anyone. Like, right? Relax. I, I have to admit. If he told me I, to I, die. I the DM would have been, like, and checked his health and been like... Will it kill him? Is that big meme? At full health, unless you roll really well, I think I'm okay. No. No, 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 no. Power, power, kill. power kill just kills you. Kills oh, you if you're no, unjust. he said finger of death. No, oh, I yeah, said finger of right, death. Yeah, 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 like, but he, he power well, killed... Uh, yeah, he's uh, finger of death on me and tried to yeah, kill Yeah, and me. he power would killed Marcus. So I was like, okay, I'm going to power would kill someone. But I don't want to pick the button. Like, any of you are still under, under 100 HP at max. So, like, you're all dead. I should have hit Brooks, man. I'm fucking hilarious. Who's like, I'm unkillable. Like the only reason yeah. I decided to use it on Marcus was because, like, listen, I'm not gonna fucking fire would kill one of the party members after all the shit they've gone through. Plus, Marcus is annoying because he's a cleric, he's a healer, so like, it kind of sort of, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Finger but the next time we fight him, the first thing he's gonna drop is power word kill on Brooks. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> Brooks is there and he's just like, you can't he wrote, he, power he, like, kill. He wrote down. <laughs> Brooks's name in a little journal, and he's gonna. Well, I'm in his diary. Dear diary, I met. Which makes it even more Brooks. like perfect if the one shot does happen and you play Brooks. Oh yeah, fucking guy. guy. <laughs> I can't wait. He's, for he's like, like, oh, the hero's exile. Doesn't remember anyone else from our other current party, but just looks at Brooks and goes, "You, you." <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, this oh, we rolled a thirty-one for initiative first turn. Yeah, he's gonna cast power word kill on Brooks. Uh, as far as uh, you down to 100, Laura's power question, kill. she also asks, how long yeah. have you known he would reappear in camping 2? As soon as he got the in, entire time. camping 1. I was like, he's going to show up at some point. Uh, did you know he was too juicy to let fade away? Or was it more of a reason to No, I already want, I already knew he was going to be that one bad guy that, that, that like, survived Unites. campaign 1, and he's going to show up in camping 2 at some point. Didn't know him to what capacity and when. Um, the decision to put him there, on your path there, was when you guys went to hell. I was like, okay, fuck it, this is as good as an opportunity as, as any, I feel like, to introduce him at least. Um, but yeah, like, as far as, like, when, how long have I known he would reappear? As soon as Camping 1 ends, like, he's gonna show up at some point. It's Anne. This man could have showed up anywhere. He could have been a fucking stripper in the new continent, but no, you made him a lich. Uh, Soko has couple questions as well. Oh, how are you? Oh, cool. Oh, Koibi. Uh, how does Alazrin feel about Marcus, uh, given that he kind of slid into his role uh, in the party pretty seamlessly? Is he going to be sad that Marcus is leaving the party soon? Um... <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, me being angry at Marcus is very much a Koiva thing, not, a, not an Alazrin thing, right? It's very much me, 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 me I'm being like, I'm being replaced! <laughs> right. But, I mean... You are, though. Yeah, I mean, it's fair. <laughs> it was going to happen eventually, man. The next person on my list to replace is Ethan. At the end of at the end of this year, Dungeon Select is going to be me DMing myself. So what do you think, Pipe? Go well, party. He's <laughs> <laughs> just going to fold. I'm going to have DMs six fucking years. cameras set up. It's all you. So it's depending, so depending on what character talks, I just know what camera to look at. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could put you could put a little photo of like... each character above the cameras. Yeah, so I know, like, oh, that's the Marcus cam. That's the DM camera. <laughs> like, I, I, I know. <laughs> have a little stream deck and then just have like oh. one camera on screen at a time and you can just cut to different like oh angles of you. Oh my God. Like, I'll make a party that consists of like um, Marcus, Celesti, Captain Vera. Like I'll, I'll go down the list of NPCs, man. <laughs> Don't worry. Do it. We've still got uh, mine and Laura's boy to arrive at some point. I'm as well. Yeah, sure. Mm. 
And what was yours and Duke's? Yours uh no. Ours was the uh pirate uh bird. What was you and Soko? Duke and Bell made okay, that's what I mean. Sorry, I meant I mean Soko. Sorry. We made the we made the Aracocra who was a giant's parrot. Yeah, like an Aracocra yes. that was like a, a, a sea giant like pirates like parrots. Yeah. 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 Say that ten times. Fucking hell. Sea giant pirate parrot. Sea giant pirate parrot. Sea giant pirate yeah. parrot. Anyway, back to the question hand. Um uh Alaskan He probably won't be too upset Modern Marcus goes. Um because just you know, he, he he has he feels a lot of responsibility for, for the party. Um and so like yes, it's nice that he doesn't have to think about as much boss, he's like Bro, <laughs> come on bro, <laughs> you know, they go they got a clerk, you know. Just, you know just... I can see a lot of Without him you guys would have been fucked. Yeah, put that's not the point. His, put some respect on his name. No, he, he <laughs> is He's glad he's been there, and he's like, cool, the burden's been a lot less, and I can, like, concentrate a lot more, and I can focus on different things, and I can, you know, exist. But he's also just like, this is, you know, he's mother-heading a little bit. He's like, well, these are my children, right? So why are you telling me how to parent? Like, these are my kids? Can you... They're listening to Kids Don't Bob right now. Don't worry, he has a fucking sick to town kids to rebuild. Bad. He's not, he's like, as soon as you guys get out of hell, he's gone, all right? I I feel more bad about all the trauma we've fucking given him, and that's yeah, that's true. We've ruined this man. He's, like, he's got a new pen pal. Absolutely... He's like, dear Marcus, how's life? How's your brain after being in hell and dying? We owe this man a, a good meal, a drink. Like as soon as you all leave, he's gonna just like go to a fucking shop, pick out the nicest like rope, and find a nice tree. Don't <laughs> say that. <laughs> he's done, dude. He's, he's like, a cleric. That's a sin. <laughs> he's a cleric. He's literally he's been to I... hell. All right, like he's like, he and if he dies by suicide, he'll go back. Maybe once, maybe he likes it. Maybe he wants to go back and he likes it so much. He's like, oh, oh, God. Dude, he's like this is hell. All this the women are really hot. Yeah, this is fucking cool. Look at those armored women. <laughs> um, for Ethan, does Brooks ever feel frustrated about how close range he is and not having anything like magical compared to the rest of the party? I mean, the only time that I imagine that Brooks feels frustrated about it is when there's flying enemies. Because I have some ranged weapons, like I have daggers I can throw and darts and shit like that, and they don't do terrible damage. But a lot of my class features are based on being in close range. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like Brooks doesn't see think of it as a weakness to not have range. He really enjoys that the personal touch. Like if he's gonna kill someone. He wants to be in their face, like, punching the shit out of them. There to teabag them. Yeah, exactly. Like... Not fair. Brooks... Brooks as a character, to me, has always been someone that's very dopamine motivated. Very adrenaline motivated. Like, he isn't good at fighting. Like, he doesn't like to fight because he's good at fighting. He's good at fighting because he likes to fight and he continued to get the shit beat out of him until he learned. Like, he would go into fights knowing that he would lose and he's okay with that because he enjoys getting the shit kicked out of him. He enjoys doing dumb stuff. If someone said, let's jump off this fucking cliff into that puddle, he's like, yeah, sure, why not? You know? <laughs> I'll just turn into a goldfish at the bottom. He has issues. <clears throat> uh, yeah, maybe. Oh, that's I think he has that a very... That, that was a rhetorical question. You don't know the answer. I think he has a very addictive personality. He's very like. I'll say a dick. Yeah, he is a dick. He is a dick. He's very. I feel like because nah, he dude, knows. Sometimes, him... bro, like the way you play him, and I'm gonna be like, sometimes I'm just like, dude, I should be more punishing when he fucking ego checks me like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I... Holy fuck, dude. The th the the thing that annoys me is like I don't want to outright kill you for being a fucking loud loud mouth, right? <laughs> the thing is, I almost killed you, and the only thing that you, that Brooke got out of that was, pfft, you didn't kill me. <laughs> so, like, I feel like the only way he's going to learn is to actually die. I feel like, you know I mean, this has been quite a humbling experience. And that's a very toxic character trait, in my humble opinion. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, my sort of vague character development idea in my head that slowly formed has been the the realization that yeah fuck he can take a beating but you know who can't the rest of the all people. the people around him that he cared about 
like he went into this thinking, I don't give a shit about these people. Hmm. And then 20 episodes in, he was like, yeah, I don't give a shit about these people. I'm just gaslighting them and being manipulative. I definitely don't care about them. The only reason I'm doing this nice thing for them is because they'll like me more and that's so and then like no he was gaslighting himself mm. yeah exactly literally yeah. <laughs> and now he's sort of at this point where Your he's like opium. <laughs> got like two or three episodes ago maybe a bit more but before we left the i think it was the tavern in Daramuth where we stayed mm. yeah and he went and spoke to a lazarin mm. and he was like there are people in this group that i care about and I need you there to make sure that they don't die. So you don't get to go off on your own and do dumb shit. Hmm. To then have that transition to Daigon dying has been quite... Like, outside of combat, I've played him a lot quieter recently. His ego in combat comes from being in a rage. Right, that's what his rage is to me. It's that very, like, I'm fucking unkillable. There's something that I'm kind of surprised about with Brooks as a character, and obviously having those conversations and that. And I don't know if this is just because, obviously, anything, and I don't want to influence anyway, but I'm surprised that Brooks wasn't more angry with Elazarin, even though Elazarin was there present, because he couldn't save Daigon. It's in like, well, you can't fucking say this person was point, you know? Because that's what Lazarin thinks currently, right? Do you know the worst part of it? Yeah. It's because Brooks doesn't see a Lazarin as a shield to keep the party okay. Right. Brooks yeah. actually cares about a Lazarin and yeah. against his better judgment likes him as a person. But can't bring himself <laughs> to admit it. that. So rather yeah. than telling a Lazarin that he cares about him, it's... he tells a Lazarin that he needs him. That makes a lot of sense. That makes sense. But he can't, he can't just say to a Lazarin, like, yeah. I care about you, I don't want you to die. Yeah. I mean, what's great about this is Lazarin has taken Daigon's death so to heart. Good. Uh, it is his fault. Okay, well, good. I mean, it is. But... In, the, in, the, in the sense of, the like... Is, like... And I don't know what's going to happen, right? Because at the end of the day, yeah, of course. Like, the resurrection ritual is going to happen, and, like... Yeah. We, I know your... There's, we three, know. Poss we all there's, know. Three, there's three we, possible outcomes that I've discussed. We all, know your, we all know your viewpoint on death, Dutch. <laughs> Cuts back watch, to like watch last episode. No, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's three possible out uh, outcomes yeah. of that um, ritual. Mm -hmm. There is mm -hmm. resurrection succeeds, mm -hmm. resurrection fails, mm -hmm. and there's like, a third option that could also happen. Yeah. Uh, oh, is that, that the I don't know, source of works? I don't know. Um, uh, oh. So like, and those are the three options that Laura was like, yeah, okay, that's okay. That, those are the three options that I want on the table. Like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's it's like, a. Laura decides the outcome. Mm -hmm. Like, does Daigon want to come back to begin with? Yeah. Right. Then there's B. Rolls fuck us. Well, not even that. We haven't had a ritual like this in a while, but you guys are gonna have to like mm -hmm. really bring some convincing mm -hmm. words and things to the table to try and convince. Diagon to mm. want to come back mm. and then roll to see if the mm -hmm. ritual works to begin with. Um, so, like, there's a lot of factors that, like, I have no fucking clue. I have mm -hmm. no clue whether Diagon is going to come back or not. No idea. Like, I'm just as much in the think, as you guys are. I have no clue. I think Diagon might be the single hardest character to convince to come back. Because she has so much fear or doubt that anyone like Dagon's always had this mindset of do these people actually care about me mm. there's always been anxiety is not the right word but like there's been that um that lack of confidence there there's always been that lack of confidence there mm. that was i guess from the moment the Diagon started to realize that hers and Kess's friendship was a bit... Eh. Eh. But eh. Like... A few more levels and Kai might be able to add her two dead body to his crew. Nice, dude. Nice. Don't nice. worry, I could do that oh. now. Ooh. It's not. I you imagine just, like, I just the fuck resurrection, it out of the good. Like, the thing fails, <laughs> and then the next day, Elastra's like, Look, Kess, it's your best friend, as, like, zombie Diagon walks in. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and the mate did. But I mean, I have, I have taken, so... I have taken, like, Speak With Dead, right? And there is... So, if Daigon wasn't in Kess's fucking thing, God, Lazarus would be like, I got things. I got a couple of things I need to ask. I got a couple of bits what, I need to ask. What would Elijah ask? Oh no, that, that you need to know that. Uh, that's in game knowledge. You need to know that. <laughs> yeah, need to, yeah, you know. I mean, he's but, not gonna get the opportunity. I mean, okay. Well, one of the, I'll tell you what. One of them would would ask Daigon because you do sort of semi connect with the salt. Would ask would Daigon want to be resurrected? It would be almost like asking for consent. It would be like, do you want this? And I mean, that would be up to the DM to decide whether or not that is knowledge that Daigon would want or would have, or if it's, hey, this is the last thing they remember is like just before they die, would they actually want to? Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's that thing of, I don't think it connects to the soul, so it wouldn't know what Daigon does really wants, but it would know what Daigon wants. It, 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 it doesn't, it's it doesn't. Weird. It's weird. It's um, weird, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Basically, the only way that yeah. that would, question would get answered is if Daigon had already thought about the possibility. Of time, beforehand, right. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does Dyson so have a DNR on? Yes or no? You know. Um. That would probably that'd be like the main one. Your snacks. And even and even then as well, that was something I thought for a while when we were thinking of like rituals and stuff. That was something I was always tempted to like input as one of my ritual like things was the speak with dead. But I was like, God, fucking, I can't think of enough other things that I could do it with, right? Like, it was one of those ideas, like, that'd be quite cool. And I was like, oh, fuck, this requires planning. <laughs> Shit, I have to think. And then my brain went, you've got one okay question at best here, boy. <laughs> like, let's not, push the, let's not push the boat on what you're, you can do. You'll have to start thinking about it. Yeah, exactly. And I was just like, yeah. But yeah, no, like, I think next that's session that's a, that's a future is going to be a pretty interesting one. Because we're going to be fucking get out of hell. Hmm. And then it's a matter of like to saving private Dagon. Dagon, maybe. Saving private Dagon. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> saving That's private the episode Dagen. title. No, only no. if we res it. Only if we res it, saving private Dagon. If we don't, it's like. We no, fail. no. It, the title is <laughs> Nine Lives, right? Like. Working title, guys. Working title. Eight Lives, Seven Lives. This is like, like Project Nine Lives is like the, the working title while it's in production, and then, you know, the actual exactly, title yeah. will be revealed yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, yeah. next Gamescom or some shit. Um, but yeah, like, I, I I think we've had, it's been a tumultuous few episodes, and I think... It's been, heavy. It's been very heavy. I, yeah. it, so I, I think next session episode, is definitely going to be a bit of a it's, break from it all. It's, it might still be very emotionally heavy, but at least the party's not in nice. life-threatening danger. And then from then on out, it's just like for Instagalia. What do we do now? You know what I mean. And yeah. then from I mean, then on, there's... we'll just kind of take it one episode at a time for a little bit to kind of oh, yeah. men mental reset because it's been it's been a lot. I mean, a lot. I really enjoy the aftermath episodes. Like heavy episodes mm. are great mm. in terms of setting the seed for that development, being the catalyst for character development. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But then after that, when you like, when your characters finally have that time to decompress, you get that really nice interactions between the group where you see like those changes manifest. You see, I don't know, man. Like post chaos, RP hits different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also like the. So I'm a, I am a fan of like the pre chaos RP. I'm like, I am a fan of that. Like we had the wind down, so I've had nothing. We've had that like bit, and it's just like. Hey, by the way, this thing is like, what, excuse me, what now? <laughs> like, there they were. Excuse me? <laughs> but, you know, this these next few sessions should be interesting. I, I've really enjoyed them. Don't get me wrong, like, I fucking love this shit. This is one of the reasons why I play it, is these emotional beats and, you know, especially because it's, like, something we haven't been able to fix. Not even fix, or even attempt to fix quickly, right? Like, it's not been like, oh shit, let's go to the nearest, you know, we're... we're on the outskirts of the city, we're traveling, you know, three days or whatever it is to get to a city. Cool, it's, hey, you're fucking stuck in hell, dickheads. You gotta put this on the back burner right now. So whatever you're feeling, back it up, baby. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, you what got, I'm, that's why it's like, you, gotta do it. you haven't really had time to mourn or to process because you've process. been in hell and it's been fucking brrr. But now, mm -hmm. once you, and that's also what Pixie's saying in chat, it's like, mm -hmm. once you're out, that's gonna be like, oh, f that's when the aftermath begins. Like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Then, like, it's like, are we... 
we're like as an emotionally quite stunted group in the sense of like, hey, we very much uh, we'll put our cards on the table overall, but I don't want to tell you feelings. Yeah, like you know, Alas has had his his moments with people in the sense of he's been like, holy shit, life fucking sucks right now for me, and I need My I need getting people. a nosebleed yeah. when Kez hugged him. Yeah, no, that's, that is probably one of the best like unintentional comedic moments of all time. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> like as a campaign goes, I imagine, but like. Manchester have been having those beats, but I know, man. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I mean, mean gonna be good. We, we're not anywhere near a uh, beach, but we go to Stonefall. We can have a lake. We could go fishing on the lake. Oh, I can drown in the lake because I'm fucking drinking so much alcohol. Oh, wait, you oh God. Not imagine fucking Elazarin and Brooks on a boat, trash trying to fish. Elazarin wouldn't fish. A lad's room would like be it. dragged a lot. It would be like, a it, room let's like be real. It would be, it would be a lad's like, it would be Brooks, Jax, and Davian dragging a Lazarin on to give Kess and Davian some time to deal with shit and getting wasted on a boat and fishing yeah, while I mean, I Lazarin complains. I'm excited. I'm a, I, mm -hmm. um, at times I struggle with. Uh, this campaign because of the fact that the writing is so like loose and you kind of have it's like a, it's like a pick, choose your own adventure at times we're like oh we have all these quests but what are we going to do but we're finally getting to a point where it's a little more obvious what main story beat is and what the more pressing matters are like it's getting a little bit more um it's becoming a bit more obvious where the priorities should be going and all that shit and it makes it also makes it a lot easier for me to write as well so like Hmm. Um, all right, fuck, I'm doing a piss poor job explaining it, but because the fact that everything has been so open and it has been so like, oh, ooh, choose your adventure, here we go with guys, it's really hard for me to prepare. Yeah. I don't know what to prepare, but now that it's a little more obvious, like, okay. Um, uh, fuck, what am I, what's the, what's their name? Uh, what's the override, all that shit, elementals, or main storyline okay that's obvious you have all these side quests but it's very it's a little easier for me to like kind of like know where you guys are going to be going next based on <clears throat> uh the choices you've made and like for the next foreseeable future i know okay mm, in Sigali, yeah, so it's, it's limited there i don't expect you guys to really go exploring much more outside of where you have to go in Sigalia, yeah, you know what i mean it's like okay, the next whatever. arc is therapy and then when you get back to Eldilon, like, I'm not going to introduce anything new. It's just going to be like, okay, we have this backlog of things. What are we doing? While they figure out how to turn that helmet into the actual devices that they want them to turn into. You know what I mean? When we get back to Eldilon, we're finding a licensed therapist. We're having couples counseling as a group. Lazarin is going to get shanked because he's going to go off on his own again. Wrong. He's gonna be the counselor. Come on. We're gonna have right. to. We're gonna spend two months looking for a detergent that can wash Dagon's blood out of her meerkat. Come on. Um, <laughs> but as far as the discourse goes, I don't really have anything else to really talk about or say or ask. So unless you guys have anything, I think we'll, uh, we'll call I mean, it quits here. Yeah, I mean, the D &D for fucking hours, but yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously, but. Nothing prevalent. Nothing. Nothing. Uh. That's nothing not of it. great importance. Gribbles or interest right. to literally anyone else. <laughs> yeah, it, it it just becomes me and Koiba nerding about D and D for three hours. Exactly. All right, let's uh give Dookie Duke a little raid because he's playing some Overwatch. Oh, yeah. oh what a uh, loser! Ask him about how his tank games have been going today because he's fuming. Uh, and we'll uh, catch each other all on, on Sunday. Have a good night, everybody. Peace out. Take care. Bye. Let me fucking get the raid shit ready. Hold. Uh, raid Sir Duke 33. Boom. And uh, catch you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Hour. Like wants the da -da bomb, bomb, bomb. Now slowly like fade out. It's just like um
bum, bum.